Hey everyone, in this episode, I want to talk about narcissistic rage, abuse by proxy, and how narcissists will abuse by proxy using law enforcement or smear campaigns to their friends and family. So narcissists thrive on being in control of other people. They, they live in a delusional world. And again, I've said this before, some people get really upset. You know, when, when people state that and like, no, they, they really are delusional. And personally, I don't care if someone lives in Delulu land, but when you're hurting other people and you're abusing people, you know, these are people's lives. Like that's no good. That's no good. You're more than welcome to live in Delulu land for the rest of your life. Just not at the expense of others. Well, narcissists, you know, they have all this rage and their cycle of abuse is pathological. So they always have to be actively abusing someone or something. And if they don't have a person to abuse, you know, they don't have narcissistic supply, then it usually goes to, you know, really high risk behaviors as coping mechanisms in order to get that supply. So if they don't have a person to abuse, they basically start abusing themselves, you know, through excessive drinking drugs, <clears throat> you know, overeating, gambling, spending money that they don't have. And narcissists, they, they thrive in chaos. They absolutely thrive in chaos. And if you're not toxic enough for a narcissist or, you know, their lifestyle, they, they see you as a problem. They, they take that as an offense, you know, as disobedience. Because they don't want to understand that they live in chaos. So if you're not toxic or chaotic, they see you as a problem, you know, and then they create chaos for you. They manufacture chaos. Well, all this rage that they have inside, and you know, if you've been a victim of a narcissist and, you know, people on the outside, outsiders are always, I, I don't understand so-and-so's, you know, just so nice. They're just so charming. Yeah, well, that's because they're actively abusing someone to regulate their emotions. That is how they regulate their emotions, you know? So without somebody to abuse, they, they are unable to have that type of self-control to maintain their composure in public or in front of other people. Well, narcissists will get triggered by one place and then, you know, keep it all together because they have an image to maintain. They're very, very hooked on their image. So if somebody, let's say, makes them mad at work or upsets them at the grocery store, they will try to keep it together as long as they can until they can get to somebody that they can abuse in private. And, you know, then they displace all that anger and rage. And then meanwhile, during that you know, fit of rage, that episode, the screaming, the yelling, the verbal abuse, the psychological manipulations. If you don't respond accordingly to their verbal abuse, these onslaughts of just horrible behavior, throwing stuff, screaming and yelling, threatening, name calling, you know, they get, they get angrier and then they start projecting because now you've triggered them because they're not getting the reaction out of you that you want. Now, if you start to fight back, they get narcissistic supply off that, which is ultimately what they want. However, if you don't feed into it, they get angrier and angrier and they will keep pushing you and poking at you until finally, you know, you engage in reactive abuse. Well, when narcissists can't control you because they must be in control of everyone and everything around them in their, again, in their delusion, they're like the star of the show. They are the director and the rest of us, we're just characters. We're characters in their play. We're actors in their movie and we are expected, you know, to be obedient to the roles, to the script that the narcissist writes for us. And when you don't do that and you don't comply with their demands, they just, you know, they get so angry and enraged and then they want to put you in your place and they will punish you and they will abuse you until your behavior is under control again. And, you know, and then after they do this to you, after they abuse you and abuse you and abuse you and whether or not, however you react, it doesn't matter if you react in reactive abuse and you fight back, then that just reinforces to them that you are the problem and they get a thrill off being able to get someone to fight back and react. And then that regulates their emotions. 
you know, that because now you've internalized all their bad behavior. So now they're regulated. And that's why after a narcissist rages on you and you finally break and then you engage in reactive abuse or fight back, they are completely calm. You know, and then they'll stand there and look at you while you're absorbing all this trauma that they just put you through. And they're completely calm. And they'll say, see, look at you. Look at how crazy you are. And then they run and tell everybody or abuse by proxy. We'll get to that in a minute. But that, that's how they're able to be so calm after they finally get you to react. Because once you react, they've officially been able to displace everything onto the other person. They've been successful at projecting everything onto another person and you have to internalize it for the narcissist because if you do not internalize it for them, then that puts you know their emotions back on them. They need someone to absorb and internalize their displacements, their projections. You know, they need this is part of pulling you into their shared fantasy. Now, if you don't react, if you don't react to the narcissist, nar their rage, you know, their displacement of anger, their projections when they just, you know, basically tell you how they feel about themselves. If you don't do that and they don't get the narcissistic supply out of you that they need, they have to then internalize everything that they just did. So then that creates a narcissistic injury, and that's where the injuries come from. Because without the narcissist being able to project and displace everything that they're feeling inside onto someone else, it causes an injury. So then they want to retaliate, and that's why they get so, you know, they're just vengeful. They get so, they will do anything to seek revenge. And then, because now you've been disobedient, you've threatened their control, and the narcissists are all about control. So you will be punished. They will stop at nothing until you've been taught your lesson for threatening their control. And it's simply because you've chosen not to internalize, you know, what they're throwing at you, the hate, the rage, the screaming and the yelling, the name calling, the manipulations, you know, and even if you are internalizing it, if they don't think that you are, it causes that injury. So then, you know, they seek revenge. And they will do things, you know, the smear, they do this through smear campaigns. They run to everybody and try to rally in people and they, cause they got to get even with you. They need to make you the bad person because you didn't respond. And now they're stuck sitting with all these emotions inside of them that they were trying to displace onto you, that they were trying to project onto you. And you're like, uh, uh, no, I'm not going to take that. Now you stay over there and you keep that to yourself and you don't react and you don't engage. So now they have to teach you a lesson. <laughs> and this is where the abuse by proxy comes in when they're teaching you a lesson. So they do it, you know, they can do it in multiple ways. Their main two things they like to do is smear campaigns and they love to use law enforcement. And so they will abuse you and abuse you and abuse you. And then if you finally react and engage in reactive abuse, you know, and, and fight back because you're in fight or flight mode, Again, they, they get completely calm because now they've displaced all their internal rage onto you and you've internalized it. So their emotions are regulated. So they're completely calm. Then they use your reaction as proof to reinforce their, their delusion and their superiority. And they're just, like I said, they're so calm because they've been able to regulate their emotions at that point because you've internalized them. Now, that, again, remember that. So if you want to create a narcissistic injury in a narcissist, all you have to do is not engage or give them the complete opposite reaction of what you know they want out of you. And I'll get to that later. Now, if you choose not to engage with the narcissist, either way, when you react, they're going to run, they're going to run smear campaigns. They're going to go tell everybody, you know, this person is abusing me. Look how they're reacting. And they'll tell everybody about your reaction, but they won't tell anybody about the abuse that they inflicted on you. To get that reaction and they'll do the same thing if you react to a narcissist abuse they love to call the cops and try to get you in trouble and then tell the tell law enforcement that you're doing to them everything that they did to you and then they'll use your reaction to prove that you're the abuser this is how they they twist the narrative and how they so many victims get trapped in the cycle and, and victims don't know how to describe what's happening but that's exactly how it happens now if you don't engage and you don't internalize the narcissist abuse, 
then it basically like bounces off you. It's like a mirror. You become, actually that's what it is. You become a mirror. So when you don't engage and you're still, they're forced to face themselves. So your lack of engagement or you giving them the opposite reaction of what they expected will cause a narcissistic injury because then that means you did not internalize their behaviors. You did not respond the way they wanted you to respond. And so when you don't internalize it, it then reflects back onto them and causes an injury. So you haven't done anything, but that's just it. They're injuring themselves. And the only way for them to not injure themselves is to injure someone else. So you, you not engaging or you reflecting back at them or giving them the opposite reaction of what they wanted, then they become injured. And that's where the, the rage sets in even more. So again, your reaction or lack of reaction, it just the narcissist is still going to then abuse you by proxy through smear campaigns and get other people in on the abuse, you know, to bully and isolate you further for them to punish you for creating that injury in them. And then if they don't get the reaction, they'll use law enforcement. They'll call, you know, cops on people and say, A, B, and, you know, so-and-so did A, B, and C to me, which is actually everything they did to the person. But this is how, if they can't abuse you and they can't get a reaction out of you and you've threatened their control, they're going to show you, well, I'll call, I'll call the police and the police can make you defend yourself because you're, you're lack of reaction and your refusal to defend yourself against their displacement of feelings, their projections, they're going to find one way to get it out of you. So, you know, they'll, you know, you, they run smear campaigns and then you want to defend yourself against what the narcissist is saying and what people are accusing you of. They'll call law enforcement on you to get that reaction out of you, to get you to defend yourself to law enforcement because, you know, they're going to tell law enforcement lies. So, yeah, so they're going to, you know, always the narcissist will always omit the bad things that they've done to create that reaction out of you or the non reaction out of you. You know, they will always omit that part. Well, thank you for listening. I hope this helped you understand narcissistic rage, narcissistic injuries, abuse by proxy, and why they do what they do with smear campaigns and law enforcement and how they need you to internalize their projections in order for them to regulate their own emotions and be able to maintain some form of self-control in front of others. So that is why it is so important to not react to a narcissist abuse, to not react to anyone's abuse. Do not defend yourself. Do not give them that narcissistic supply because ultimately your lack of reaction causes them to injure themselves, which isn't a pretty sight when they have an injury. But just do not react. Remain no contact. You know, stay gray as a rock to the gray rock method, which is no reaction, become as boring as a rock and force them to face themselves. Again, thank you for listening. Stay strong, stay safe, keep getting the knowledge. You are all going to be amazing no matter where you're at on your healing journey. Just hang in there. You're going to make it through this. It will get better. I promise. The more you learn about yourself, the more you heal yourself, the the easier it gets to understand what's happening to you when people start coming at you like that and start trying to verbally abuse you and psychologically manipulate you. Have a good day, guys.